we are going to go over our top five list. I guess you could be top 10 if you add us together of our worst looking 4K UHD Blu-rays. This doesn't encompass only 2022. This is just everything from its inception to now. So it's not year dependent. And this is only based on how visually, how bad it looks or how good it looks, depending on who you are. It has nothing to do with the sound, has nothing to do with the story. Only oh. visually. Was your, was your number five pick for worst looking 4K um, Blu-ray? Honestly, I, I bet a lot of people aren't going to agree with me. But when I got the newest release of the original Star Trek movies, um, they released the first four uh, in 4K Blu-ray HDR. You know, supposedly they went through quite an ordeal to remaster it and scan the negatives again. But uh, I don't know. I guess it's the way it was shot. I know it was shot with a lot of soft filters. But I just was not impressed with the way that this transfer looked. Um, I don't know why that is or I don't know if maybe they could have done something better but it just didn't wow me whatsoever I mean like with the like what you're saying like with Reservoir Dogs I mean yes it was in the 90s and Star Trek was in the 70s so there's definitely a huge gap of you know advancements and technology and better cameras whatever but uh but yeah I was just didn't really like how it looked and uh, I even popped in the Blu-ray and I was like I hardly see any difference between the Blu-ray and the 4K. Wow. So I yeah. I haven't seen it. I know somebody had left a comment um Mr. GameSack, if you guys are not um familiar with GameSack, he has a very big YouTube video game, like vintage video game channel. He had mentioned that to me. Um but I I, I haven't seen any of the movies. I should probably see it. I think he said something like it was very low bit rate. Maybe maybe that's why. It's a little pixely looking. So. I don't I have no idea. But uh, he yeah. had mentioned that to me, but I haven't seen it. I'm not a big Star Trek fan, so I wouldn't have seen it anyways. Um, yeah, I'm not a huge Trekkie, yeah. but you know, I was still interested just because it was, you know, some anniversary like, yeah, fiftieth anniversary or something. So it was a pretty big ordeal for yeah. this particular collection to come out. But, yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Maybe they rushed it because it was going to be an anniversary issue or anniversary edition. But, yeah, just didn't wow me. My number five would have to be, speaking of Star Wars, uh, I think my number five would have to be Star Wars, the original movies. I f I think everybody knows there's a little bit of DNR in those movies. Is it really the worst looking though? I think I think because everybody loves the movie so much, and then when I saw them, I was like, oh my god, the Phantom Menace looks like shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, that that was a pretty bad looking movie. I re I do recall it was shot on like 1080p, maybe a little li bit less than that back in the day because I. I think that's the year they started coming out with digital. Lucas was just like, we're going to shoot it digitally in 1080p, mm -hmm. HD. Those ones, and also like the originals too. There's also a very light spattering of D and R, like the original, the original, original ones. Mm -hmm. So, so, so that's my, that's, that's my number five. I guess, you know, you lumped in four movies together as your number five. I think, I guess I got like six. I guess I lumped in six for my number five. Right. <laughs> Dang, you two up. <laughs> I, I beat you. <laughs> I beat you. And, I, uh, it, and the thing is, I, I think, you know, since it's kind of like you, you did Star Trek, I did Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And there's such beloved franchises, too. So it's like you would think it would be like so impeccable. Yeah. It's you, you know. It all the time in the world to make it yeah. just perfect but you know what's funny because we did the we did the stream with the guy that mixed um the last jedi and some other and some other audio over on audio Holics channel yeah. and you know off camera he was like telling us what it's like to mix these big films all right so that was our number five was uh star wars well star trek for you star wars for me what is your mm -hmm. number four well this is 
this is one of the ones that's not exactly going to pertain to the topic, but I'll, I'll try and twist it to, to make it fit. But uh, I, I do, speaking of IMAX, um, I don't appreciate that any of the MCU movies are in IMAX aspect ratio on the disc. I think it's great that you can watch them on Disney Plus with yeah. IMAX ratio, but please give me, again, IMAX enhanced aspect ratio and maybe even DTSX if you want to go all in on IMAX because there's going to be lots of people like me who are super fans of the MCU, but also really big fans of an IMAX aspect ratio because I want to have the very best picture and sound quality possible, which right now is still only on 4K Blu-ray discs. Um, so I, if, if it just came out where just the team-up movies came out when in IMAX enhanced audio and video, like say just Avengers, Avengers, uh, Age of Ultron, um, Infinity War and Endgame, if only those came out, you know, re-released in IMAX, I would totally buy them. I own them currently, but I would buy them again in a heartbeat if they had IMAX enhanced everything on the disc as well. So just my beef with Disney right now. Elin is bringing a different level into my list of yeah. not looking something that I wasn't thinking about. He's thinking out of the box for his number four pick. Yeah. All 20 some Marvel movies all look like shit because they're in the wrong aspect ratio. My number four, I, I could probably switch any one of these around, but I'm going to go Pirates of the Caribbean number one mm. on 4K Blu-ray. That movie is so DNR'd. Uh, oh. Yeah, that stands for um, digital, digital noise reduction. Noise reduction. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so much in that movie. Pirates of the Caribbean, I know has a pretty big following. It's also part of a really big franchise. I don't know what the other films, well, except for the newly, uh, the newer ones, well, like maybe like part five, I think is actually a really good looking one. I don't know what part two and three looks like, because I don't think those are on 4K Blu-ray, but I know they're on Disney Plus. But it's usually kind of hard to tell on Disney Plus if there's DNR, because it's not always the best on Disney Plus. Because I remember watching... Pirates of the Caribbean one on Disney Plus when it first came out mm -hmm. on Disney Plus and I was like oh this looks okay I guess um, but then it became way more noticeable once it hit physical media that there was noise reduction it was like overly smooth and it just looked like it just looked really bad yeah so I found that that was a little that was a little weird because sometimes sometimes you know just like you were saying in your HBO Max review on Game of Thrones Sometimes it's uh, negligible where the digital and the physical, you can't really tell too much of a difference. Yeah. Um, so when I first saw Pirates of the Caribbean on Disney Plus, like a year before it was even on physical media, I was like, oh, I was like, this is fine. It's nothing special. But then the physical came out. It was a, a glaring difference between the two. I was like, oh, this looks like shit. Uh, yeah. So yeah, so that, that's definitely another case of where it's like, yeah, physical media can definitely resolve more detail than, I guess, certain streams. Maybe not every stream, but at least this particular stream uh, on Disney+. Plus. So that's my number four, Pirates of the Caribbean. Did you see Pirates of the Caribbean? And what would you think? Or do you even own it on 4K Blu-ray? I do not own any of them on 4K Blu-ray. Uh, but we did actually watch my family. I watched uh, the... How far do we get in? I don't think we saw four and five, but we watched one through three, like over a, a period of a, a week, I think. And uh, I don't remember number one too much, but I do remember thinking to myself that two and three looked incredible. So, but that was on Disney Plus. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure what that means, but, but yeah, they, they definitely hold up as far as 
looking good on streaming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like fine. I think we're on streaming. <laughs> so that's uh, that's my number four. Number three, Elin, what's your number three? I was so into District Nine when it first came out. Really? I saw it in the, the I saw it in the theater. Um, I owned it on Blu-ray. And then just recently, I don't know, maybe four four months ago, four to six months ago, maybe I picked it up on 4K, because my uh, my Blu-ray version got scratched or something. It was just not playing very well, so I popped it in. I mean, it didn't look anything different than the Blu-ray, or hmm. maybe even a little bit worse. Um, yeah, I was not pleased with with making that purchase because i i probably should have just got it on blu-ray again and saved a little bit of money but uh but yeah i was it it just did not look that good there's i can't, i can't remember if it was just a 2k di or not but most likely i think they just you know increased the resolution but didn't really actually go back in and properly upscale it to 4k right um so yeah it, it's just it's a pretty bad transfer well that right. and the movie didn't hold up as well as i <laughs> thought it would <laughs> i mean i still enjoy it still a pretty good yeah. movie but i remember i was just amazed at it and it was the coolest thing ever when i saw it in the theaters and now i'm like eh, it's it's okay it's a pretty good movie it so not didn't... only not only did you not like the transfer but you felt that the movie itself lost some luster. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know, I know with District 9, there are a lot of shots that are supposed to look like, like it's on a TV or it's a little bit yeah. grainy or it's like a little bit mm -hmm. reduced as if like some guerrilla um, reporters are getting mm -hmm. footage of stuff. I mm -hmm. know that's part of it, but even in the shots that are supposed to be cinematic it still just doesn't look that great that's that's your number three is yeah. district nine was not expecting that good choice i didn't think about it like that but okay yeah. you're coming up with some uh sneaker uppers on me <laughs> uh my number three forrest gump starring oh, tom hanks okay. robin mm -hmm. wright penn at the time um, I believe that was like so much DNR in that one. I don't know if I gave it a four or five on my scale of, of, of visual ratings. Whoa. But uh, I recall that looking not very well. Uh, there was like no grain in that. It was very smeary. And yeah, I mean, any one of these, uh, my top three could probably swap places like i said i uh, wasn't happy with the way that looked and i, and I like forrest gump I, I really do like forrest gump and yeah. you know it touches on the you know tugs on the heartstrings yeah. i couldn't watch i couldn't enjoy it mm. i think i would rather watch the blu-ray over this 4k transfer that's my number three did you see forrest gump yeah, i've been 4K? thinking about i've i've honestly been contemplating with the holidays coming up i've been contemplating getting forrest gump because it's such a classic um because I own it on Blu-ray, but I don't own it on 4K. So, thanks for saving me some money. <laughs> Maybe they'll film. do like an anniversary re-release -re or something and properly rescan negatives or something. Because I, I think it's old enough to where it was shot on film. I think. <laughs> yeah, like uh, this is Reservoir Dogs looks that good. Of course, Gump mm -hmm. should be like, she's even better. Yeah, exactly. So that's me, number three. Let's go number two. What's your number two, Elon? Number two. Oh, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with another uh multiple for my number two. And that is the uh Cornetto trilogy from Edgar Wright. That's uh Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and World's End. Whoa. Uh World's End. Cause I I, I owned I owned all three on Blu-ray, uh, but I knew that the 4K versions had uh, DTSX audio tracks. Um, so I was like, well, pfft, of course I got to own it with DTSX. 
But, uh, I mean, maybe it was because of when they were shot and the budget they were shot. But, uh, I mean, World's End is probably the best looking of the three because it's the new West. But uh, Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz in particular, I mean, there's there's like shots where like the sky is just like totally blown out. You can hardly see any detail in the sky clouds and everything it just mm. it almost looks like like back in the day when people first started shooting on digital and you know they couldn't get really the contrast right so skies were just totally blown out and stuff but uh but yeah not not a not a good transfer i'm pretty sure all they did was upscale the the blu-ray and didn't really do much else so it was a bit disappointing that I spent this money to get this trilogy again. It sounds great, mm -hmm. but uh, but yeah, not not a good video transfer at all. I've not seen any one of those on 4K. Uh, I think that's the only thing on your list that I have not seen so far. <gasps> Whoa, there you go. Yeah. Oh, no, I take that back. Star Trek, never mind. Number two for me, worst looking 4K Blu-ray to avoid... To avoid, don't even buy these. Just buy the Blu-ray. Don't even get these Whoa. ones. Because I, I feel like this whole set is uh, so beloved. This is another set. Um, three, and then three. It's really six, I guess you could say. It's going to be Lord of the Rings. Oh. Lord, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I don't know how you feel about that. But I feel... <laughs> Lord of the Rings, uh, extended edition, I guess, what a regular edition, Hobbit, if you want to count the Hobbit too. Um, we did an extensive like review on the other channel, Dynamically Challenged, which I know a bunch of you, of you guys are not subscribed to. You subscribe to that. Um, this is where this whole live stream is going to live in its entirety. I'm going to chop it up over on Shane Lee. Um, but um, yeah. Um, I mean, we, we did a review on it live and there's just so many parts where it was just like DNR, it was just like smooth. People would move, people would move and their faces would get all smoothed oh. out and then catch up and be like crisp. And then they'd move. Like how many times are you just going to be like still and then talk and act and not move? Right. What is it called? Like temporal something or another. Uh, yeah, it was just bad, man. And then I, I didn't do it because... And then uh, I was like, you know, if I say this movie, if these Lord of the Rings movies look like crap, I'm going to be the only one. And then it was like, out of all the quote unquote professional reviewers, everybody said it was like amazing looking. Like nobody was like, it was bad. I was mm. like, what is this guy's thinking? But then like in the community, the 4K community, um, everybody knew, everybody knows it's bad. It's a bad looking movie or uh, just a bad looking set of movies. So that's that's my number two. Like every 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 one of them, just uh, not good. I enjoy the movies. They're not like horribly horrible, horrible, horrible. Uh, but you know, uh, yeah, just yeah, just 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 for its uh, reverence of being uh, such a great, such a great series of movies, hmm. deserved better, for sure. And if you if if you think, I'm not saying you, Elon. <laughs> if you guys if you guys think it looks amazing you really need to get your eyeballs checked or you really need to get closer to your tv sets because it looks like shit if you're scrubbing away grain if you're looking at some of the scenes with grass and all that stuff um it's gone it's, it's really smooth and the movie definitely deserved better and it looks like garbage i'm sorry for you fans out there your number one go ahead elin what's your number one worst looking 4k blu-ray Speaking of uh, speaking of collections and sagas again, uh, Harry Potter. Mm. Uh, I remember I got that. I was so excited to get that because I'm such a huge fan of Harry Potter. My wife is such an even bigger fan than I am of Harry Potter. Because um, that, that's the collection where it comes with both 4K and Blu-ray. And... It sounds great. It's in DTSX, but man, it's not even grain. It's just dark noise. 
It is the crappiest transfer I have ever seen. There's just noise throughout the entire saga. And it's annoying and it looks terrible and I hate it. Because there, yeah, there's just so many shots, like well lit shots that should look beautiful, just have this black noise going through the whole picture from, yeah, top to bottom, left to right. It's, it's Whoa. distracting and it's annoying and I, it's, it's garbage. And I haven't, I've been meaning to review them before, but I haven't because I find those movies so boring. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Harry Potter fans. <laughs> Do you know how many requests I get to review those movies? But I uh, get, yeah. I get about twenty minutes in Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings, and I am just like, because my theater gets warm, and uh, I watch Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter. I'm just like, I sink right into my seat. <laughs> I'm in La La Land in twenty minutes, man. Yeah. Um, but I have heard many things about. Uh, the blacks in Harry Potter. I've not seen them, so I can really comment. But uh, maybe yeah. I'll watch them. Maybe I'll have to watch them. Um, yeah, maybe I'll have I can... to watch them in spatial audio. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I can understand <laughs> film grain. Film grain is one thing, film grain is part of film, really. And I don't mind that. But when it's just this garbly digital noise coming from seemingly nowhere then yeah i have a big issue with that especially with again such a beloved series that so many people love they should have spent the time to do some proper cleaning or just a proper transfer or scanning the negatives or at least yeah i know the first couple were shot on film but I, i'm I bet the later ones, maybe like five and on, were shot digitally. But yeah, they just look tor they just look terrible, dumb. Interesting. All right, maybe Warner I Brothers. Have, come the, on. The funny thing is that I do have them. I just haven't watched them. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Well, Harry Potter is in the more. I was not expecting. Listen, I wasn't expecting any one of these on your list. To be honest. Uh, you surprised me out of all the, all your number fives, one through fives. I wasn't expecting any one of them. All right. So uh, number number one on my list, uh, maybe the first movie that I ever reviewed that I was not happy with, that I, I oh, think no. maybe is glo globally agreed upon, is going to have to be uh, Terminator 2, directed oh. by James Cameron and starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, I have heard that. You haven't seen that, dude? No, not the not the 4K. But, I mean, honestly, because I've heard it, it just looks like shit. So you should I've, I've steered clear of that. Get line. it anyways. <laughs> I, you know what? I would actually put I would actually put Terminator Two and Forrest Gump. Maybe I'd probably lump them together because they they're both oh, yeah. equally as bad looking. They're both yeah. equally as bad looking. I, I would say, you know, I don't I don't think. Lord of the Rings is as bad looking as those two movies, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's uh, that's really stands out in my head is Terminator Two. It's just Arnold is so waxy looking in that, mm. so waxy, it's so bad. And is I, that I'm, is that another case of too much DNR or what? Yeah, it's like Arnold's got wrinkles. If you don't have wrinkles or pores, it's DNR. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Like if you if you're looking at movies and yeah, it's just like lack of detail. I mean, just like in faces, you should see wrinkles and pores at least, mm -hmm. uh, and a good transfer. Unless maybe, I mean, there are some good transfers out there. I think there were some scenes in Maverick, Top Gun, uh, with Jennifer Connelly, where where they might scrub away some wrinkles or blemishes, maybe, which yeah. you can tell just like digitally smoothing certain things because. Mm -hmm. They want to make them look younger or something like that. Uh, yeah. But this would look like it the entire way through where the everything mm -hmm. was just kind of like, it was just soft. It was just not, yeah, it was just not good. And, and it looked very similar to Forrest Gump as well. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's number one, Terminator 2. One of everybody's favorites, man. These are all favorites, Star Trek 
a Star Wars, Harry Potter. I know, right? Beloved franchises. Beloved franchises. Beloved that franchises. Just uh, like shit. Would I say avoid all these movies? I uh, wouldn't say avoid all these movies because I mean, if you like them, you like them. I mean, yeah, some of them I exactly. think look better in Blu-ray. I mean, yeah, like, I still watch Harry Potter, but I just kind of grit my teeth through it because it visually can look better for sure. Mm -hmm. Anyways, that's our top five slash top ten list if you add them together. Uh, list of worst looking 4K Blu-rays. What is on your worst looking 4K Blu-ray list? And do you disagree with anything on this list at all? If you disagree with something, leave your comment down below. Let us know. Or if you do agree, leave your comment down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Subscribe to Elon as well. I'll leave a link down below in the video's description. And we shall see you again in the next video.